Okay, so the score doesn't really suggest how tight this game was for the most part of the game. You know, late third quarter and all the way through the fourth, yeah, the Raptors dominated. But up until that point, you know, it was around an 11-point game, then a 9-point game, sometimes a 6-point game. It was pretty tight for the most part. But both, uh, Raptors win 113-88, by the way. Um, before we break down this game, real quick, I want to talk about the trade deadline and all that jazz. Okay, so... Everyone's talking, oh, let's, let's get DeAndre Jordan. Let's go big four. Let's get Rodney Hood, a good three-point shooter. Would I have loved Rodney Hood? Oh, absolutely. But who are you trading for Rodney Hood? You're not touching your starters. You're going to give up uh, DeLon Wright, Fred Van Vliet, Siakam, Pirtle, your only three-point specialist, CJ Miles? No. Why? Look at the chemistry they got going right now. Why would you screw any of that up? They don't make a trade. You look at the Cleveland Cavaliers. They're a complete gong show. I want to hear what you guys have to say in the comments. What the heck is going on over there in Cleveland? Do you think today's trades were make, will make them better? Or do you think it's just a trade? Tra trades just to switch things up? Because my goodness. It was a nuts day in free agency as to be a Cavs fan. Holy smokes. But for the Raptors, they make one move. Trading former first-round pick, Bruno Caboclo, Caboclo, however you want to pronounce it, uh, for Malachi, I think that's how you pronounce his name, Malachi Richardson, if I'm not mistaken, if I if I'm, if I'm butchered it, again, let me know in the comments how to pronounce it, please, for a new Raptor, I want to be able to say his name, you know, I, I looked it up, and uh, I tried different ways, tried to listen to it, and couldn't really figure it out, but... If I got it right, then, hey, I look smart then. Well, I look stupid saying that I don't know how to pronounce it. But anyways, Malachi Richardson, the newest Raptor. And uh, what's this guy going to bring to us? Maybe nothing. I mean, he's a good three-point shooter, it looks like. He's 22 years old. He just got drafted, what, this is his second year in the NBA. I mean... Will this guy impact this Raptor team at some point? I don't know. I think this trade was mainly made to help Bruno get some playing time that he deserves. Hear me out. I understand we didn't like the play of Bruno. I remember his first game in the NBA. You know, all the, all the fans freaking out, knocking down three after three. We're like, oh my God! You know, and that's really that's really all that happened. I mean, he, 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 like, like we said, I think it was in preseason. He looked lost on the court for the most part. He had a tough time. He looked scared out there when he got the ball. He's like, oh, I got to get rid of it. Uh, and chuck up a three. You know, it just didn't really, it didn't look right. I don't know if it was the pressure or the full crowd, you know, letting him hear it kind of thing. I don't know. But I think going to a team like Sacramento, a team that's rebuilding, uh, a team that's going to use him, I would assume. He's going to get playing time. And I think that's the reason that trade went through. You know what? As much as Bruno didn't play for this team much at all, I hope that, uh, I really, really hope that uh, thing go, things go well for him. And um, I really, really hope he, he turns out to be a, qu a quality NBA player. I, it didn't work here, but that's all she wrote. So that's enough about the trade deadline, guys. Let's break down this game tonight. All right? Like I said, Raptors win 113-88, and uh, it wasn't, you know, the, the prettiest game out there. You look at the first half, the offense was a little sluggish, not knocking down their shots, couldn't knock down a three, and they were really having a tough time early. Only scored 23 points in the first quarter. However, defense and them being injured and their lack of shooting ability right now, they only score 18, you're up five after the first quarter. Kind of the same type of deal in the second quarter. You score 29, you give up 23, you're plus 11 at the half, and you really have not played well offensively. But the hard defense this team always plays was key into that first half. That's the main reason they were still in the game. Now, coming out of the break, we're like, okay, we got to get our shots going. And the Raptors do knock down some more threes. They, they get some more shots, and they start to feel it out a little bit more. They score 30 in that quarter, giving up only 25, so the defense is still there. You score 30. Again, you're up by 16 at the end of three, and we're talking about how this team's not playing so well. But it's the team that you're playing, guys. You, you, you play like this against Boston, Cleveland, Golden State, Houston, OKC, Washington even. 
they're not going to make you look this good. Plain and simple. I mean, you go to the fourth quarter and and you're plus nine. I mean, that was that was probably one of the complete quarters of the game. Raptors were knocking down their threes. They were looking good. They were playing good defense, and they win by 25. Like I said, not the picturesque game. However, they get the job done. They did what they had to do, and now we watch Boston and the Wizards. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. Um, but uh, the, the team shoots 45% from the from, from the field. They knocked down 16 threes. However, they shot 45 threes, 36%. And I got to say, at least five or six of those were in the fourth quarter alone because the bench was knocking them down like it was in rhythm. It was nuts. Uh, what is it? 11 to 14 from the from the free throw line. Again, you out rebounded them by nine. The offensive glass, you only gave up five offensive rebounds. You had nines. You were plus four on the offensive glass. I understand Porzingis and Cantor did not play, so that's that. I understand that. Uh, the 31 assists is gorgeous. A lot of that is from the uh, from the bench unit. 11 steals, so there are four. Only eight turnovers. See, protecting the ball. Good defense. And knocking down enough shots, you're going to win games. The starting unit didn't do all that great. Your two bigs were great. Abaka, 13 points, 8 boards. However, his shooting percentage, 4 of 12. But, but, 3 of 7 from 3 for 42% is not too shabby whatsoever. Also had a couple assists and a nice, a nice block. I remember that one. That was a quite nice one. Uh, JV, 18 points, 10 boards, 2 assists, 2 steals, 2 blocks. 7 of 12 shooting. 2 of 4 from the free throw line, 2 of 3 from 3. He had a great night. His interior defense was fantastic. You know, I mean, especially on Kyle O'Quinn, I understand he's not a big, big, big threat offensively. But when Kyle O'Quinn, a big guy, down low, JV standing straight up, not letting anything easy. Beautiful job by JV. And uh, your guards, Kyle and Damar, I'm waiting for crickets. Guys, we're ice cold in this game. Kyle with 7 points, 2 boards, 3 assists. Damar, 8 points, 5 boards, 5 dimes. Not very good. And they combined 4 of 21 from the field. Kyle Lowry, 2 of uh, two of 10 from the field. And DeRozan, 2 of 11. Uh, combined, what, 3 of uh, 13 from 3. I mean, not so great. Not a great game by your guards. But here's where it gets fun. The bench. We talked about it in the Celtics game, how they took over that game. Look, the, the, the bench sealed the deal for us in this one. I mean, no question about it. The bench came out and was like, this game is ours. We are not going to play around with these guys. Let's just eat them alive. And I'm going to run through the stats real quick. And you guys will see real fast how good this bench did. First, I got to say, other than the guys who came in the last few minutes, like Norman Powell and Lucas Nogueira, the guys that were on the bench, coming off the bench throughout the entire game, every single guy was in double figures. If you're thinking, bull garbage. I try to keep a PG there. Tell me about it. All right. Well, <clears throat> Fred Van Vliet with 10. Yeah, he had, a, he had a tough night with 10 points. You know, I mean, Fred Van Vliet, rough night. 10 points, we're saying he had a rough night. Five assists to go along with that. Four of 11 shooting. Two of five from three, plus 18 on the floor. Pascal Siakam, 14 points, five boards, seven assists for Pascal. And uh, uh, six of nine shooting. Uh, one of one from the free throw line, you got an and one in there. Uh, one of three from three and plus 20 on the floor. Uh, where am I here? DeLon Wright with 11 points, three boards, three dimes, five of six shooting, one of one from three, eight plus 18 on the floor. Uh, you know, Jakob Pertl, 13 points, five boards, six of seven shooting, one of one from the free throw line, plus 22 on the floor. CJ Miles, 11 points, five boards, two dimes, Four of eight shooting, three of six from three, plus 23 on the floor. Your worst plus minus guy on your bench was uh, Fred Van Vliet and DeLon Wright at plus 18. Your worst. Do I need to say anything else? No, I, I get it. I understand. They're depleted starting lineup, so their bench guys got to step up, so they got to play guys they don't usually play. They got guys called up from the D League. I understand that. But your bench... They could sit back and, and let them come to them. But no, the bench are like, no, 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 no. We're stapling this down no matter who we're playing. And they did that. They worked fantastic. The ball, humming. I thought C.J. Miles played one of his best games of the season, not just because 
of him, of him shooting great percentages. What was he? Four of eight from the field, 50%. Three of six from three, 50%. Fantastic. But the the job defensively, CJ Miles did. Now, technically, he didn't. He only had the one steal. But the amount of defensive pressure he caused, some beautiful lead passes. You know, I thought I thought he played a great game. I thought CJ Miles played a all around really solid game. Um, and very proud of the guys for this one. Your your starters didn't do all that well against a team they should crush. But the bench. Holds the fort and is like, we ain't, we ain't taking a night off. We're, we're, we're beating these guys down. All right? So with that, that being said, Raptors have now won four in a row. Uh, excuse me. Is it four in a row or three in a row? I think it's three in a row. Yes, there's three in a row. Um, And uh, they look to continue on a roll. I mean, they're, 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 they're having some good times. No, it's four in a row. What am I saying? Yeah, going on back to the Portland game. I forgot about that one. <clears throat> Keeping an eye on the Boston. Okay, yeah, Boston's up by eight in the fourth. So it looks like that's going to happen. So it doesn't really matter right there. Next up for the Raptors. They hit the road for one, and I think they come back afterwards on the Tuesday. Yeah, they play Miami. Uh, the new Dwayne Wade Miami Heat, or old Dwayne Wade, however you want to look at it. All right, but the next game for the Raptors, like I said, they're on the road Sunday afternoon, 1 p.m. in Charlotte. Raptors look to ride their win streak up to five. Season high is six. Let's get a fifth straight dub going, all right? I'll just let you guys know right away I worked that day, so that video will be out a little bit later, maybe 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock that night. Just giving you guys the heads up there, all right? And uh, we really look to, to gain some momentum heading into the All-Star break. I think that's what we got to look forward to now. Trade deadline, come and gone. Let's get to the All-Star break. Riding a nice-looking streak, all right? Like I said, you can't look forward to Miami because that, that's going to be a tough one. You can't look forward to that. You got to look at Charlotte, 1 o'clock uh, Sunday afternoon, all right? So you know what, guys? That is going to do it for this one. You guys enjoyed this video, and uh, you guys enjoyed this game. Smack that like button. I do appreciate that. Hit the subscribe button if you guys have not already. Comment down below what you guys think of this game. Who's your player of the game? We know, I mean, it's probably going to be either JV or somebody from the bench. Let me know what you guys think about that. What do you think of the Bruno trade? Also, the pronunciation of uh, our, the newest edition. If I got it right, then we're golden. If not, let me know. Um, and we'll talk to you guys Saturday Leafs edition as they're at home taking on the Ottawa Senators. Nothing tomorrow <coughs> unless the Leafs make it great or something. I'm hurting. Um, and uh, holy smokes, guys. Blue Jays spring training right around the corner. They signed John Axford today. Canadian boy. Ontario native. Had a tough season. Veteran, 34 years of age. Hey, never know. Spring training videos will come out weekly. So we'll, we'll start with the first week of spring training. Again, see if anybody opened up some eyes, that kind of deal. All right, so we'll talk to you guys then. And we'll talk to you guys Raptors edition, like we said. Sunday, it'll be in the evening, but the game is in the afternoon. 1 p.m. tip-off in Charlotte. Raptors taking on the Hornets, looking for their fifth straight dub. We'll talk to you guys then.